Welcome back to Table 49. We've been on a bit of a break, a breather, but we're back on. <laughs> Today, we're gonna cook with Carmeli's goat cheese. And I was trying to think what I could do with this, and I was asking so many people what they do with it. There was butter chicken talk, there's just a charcuterie board talk, which I love a good charcuterie board. But I think what I wanna do with it is play with gnocchi. And I wanna make it a breakfast gnocchi that you could serve if you're hungover if you're not. So let's get into it. Ingredients below. So I've tried a lot of gnocchi recipes in my day. I used to think that, you know, it was just flour and eggs and like one potato. Then I came across Rod's and tried their gnocchi and I was like, oh, wait a minute. There's better things out there. So luckily he came out with a cookbook and we're using the recipe for the Parmesan gnocchi. The Parmesan makes it so moist and creamy and just like rich and luxurious. So we start with any other gnocchi, we have baked potatoes. We're gonna scoop those out, just the flesh of the matter, and we're gonna put it through a handy dandy ricer. I would recommend having a ricer if you like a lot of potato dishes. So that's mashed potatoes, that's gnocchi, that's, what else have we got? Potatoes, shepherd's pie, that kind of thing. Even if you're doing a paleo lifestyle, you use a lot of cauliflower. This just takes it and makes it so smooth. Let's get into it. The great thing about gnocchi as well, it's so budget friendly. What is this, like potatoes are 87 cents a pound. Parmesan. Goat cheese, go right to the farm. More affordable, I think. Don't quote me on that. Supporting local. Support local. Difference. Support local. You can keep these potato skins. Just, I don't actually, you know what? Compost them. What am I talking about? Nobody has time for potato skins. We've got our egg yolks. I have three of them. Why do I have three? It's only supposed to have two. Did I do three? <laughs> You're gonna add two egg yolks. Weird, got ahead of myself. Okay. And then we're adding half a cup of Parmesan. I'm gonna do a bit more. I feel fancy. A microplane. So goat Parmesan does exist. We heard from Thomas, right? Mm -hmm. But they just haven't explored that yet. So we're just using regular. Look for those crystals. Shows a better Parmesan than one that's more solid. You want those like little developed salt crystals. Where are they? Will you see those with your camera? Let's see. Let's see how if you get closer to the rind, they become like smaller and more dense? Mm -hmm. They do. It's better, that's good. Good, good cheese. It's a good, good sauce. Perfect, we added multiple half cups. And then we're gonna give this a mix. We're gonna cool this for 30 minutes in the refrigerator. We are gonna do a cream sauce with this guy with asparagus, so let's start with our asparagus. Always storing your asparagus or anything that's like a floral type of vegetable in some water. Ooh, it's a bit tight. <laughs> um, rather than cutting them, I just like, oh, these ones are a little. They will break where they're ready to break. So if you try to break them up top, they're too bendy, but then they'll have a nice, like that's perfect. Perfect snapping point. We're just gonna lightly uh, saute these, like very lightly. Asparagus shouldn't be overcooked. It's disgusting if it turns like anything less than a vibrant green. So this is the quickest vegetable. It's probably gonna take less than five minutes. Some butter, some salt and pepper. I prefer to make this in a cast iron pan because you can get that high heat and then it adds like this really nice crisp. Oh. Ooh. This is my Japanese cast iron pan. 
one of my favorite things. It's so light. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, we should get cocky. We're gonna just do a simple Alfredo-esque cream sauce. This is probably the times I've made it, the most popular from everyone, it's their favorite. How can you not love butter, cream, and cheese though? Unless you're a vegan. Um, super easy to do. Once you get the hang of it, you can change it however you like. We're gonna do some flavors today. Some herbs, uh, garlic of course, and then I'm actually gonna put the blue velvet in, which is a brie style cheese. Brie is so easy to put into cream sauces because it binds it so quickly. As opposed to doing a harder cheese, which you kind of have to work with and manipulate and learn, if you're just doing a soft cheese like a brie, you've got a gooey sauce. It's great. So we're gonna start with our butter. Okay, we're gonna squish our garlic into our butter. Keeping this on a low temperature. Um, the main flavor that I want with this, I think, is dill. Dill goes really nicely with asparagus. So if you have like some dill and lemon. But we'll do a bit of parsley and thyme because that's also what's in my fridge. Waste not, want not. I've got my cut up diced finely herbs and I've cut up some chili, of course. We need that little heat and we're gonna leave that cheese and we're just gonna put this in here with our garlic just until it's fragrant. To that, we're gonna add our cream, high fat cream, always better, the highest you can go, whipping cream. I prefer old fashioned whipping cream because it's higher. So we've got this. Pour it in. This is our blue velvet. So Thomas said something interesting. He said it gets more gooey as it ages, which over the past little while I have noticed, and it is so beautiful. Look at this. Oh my god, gorgeous. Let's just give it a real rough chop, rind and all. We're gonna just throw it in. That's amazing how it's changed so it's consistency. Ready? We've turned it down. Oh, I'm so excited. And we're gonna put our parm in as well. Okay, cool. We'll just let that chill. Let's finish our gnocchi. My favorite. I don't get paid by Anita's. I just really love them. <laughs> Again, we're doing double zero flour. It just smells different. Oh, Jordan. Really? Doesn't matter, it's gonna be ending up on your counter anyways. So about two cups of this. <laughs> oh. Okay, flour mixture. Okay. 
potatoes. We're gonna combine this until fully incorporated. Oh, so, I use my hands. Doesn't really matter if you don't get all the flour. You don't wanna over mix it. So don't try to get all the flour if it's not gonna work for you. To make this a color, you could add some beet juice into it, some parsley oil, something like that. We're gonna be pretty plain. We'll put the beets on top. We're gonna do half and half, so that means we're gonna just cover this for a moment. Ah, ah, our lovely abigo. Good, and we're gonna roll this guy out. See, look at that nice and airy, not dense. It's gonna be fluffy, fluffy. Mm. Then just like a kid, pretend it's Play-Doh. Don't let it, yeah. Did you ever eat Play-Doh? No. We're gonna make little cuts. If you don't have one of these, a knife works fine. Da-da, da-da. Keep them, or try to keep them, about the same size so they all cook the same. There we go. Put some flour down so we don't stick to the counter while we do our second log. Okay, we're going to pop these in boiling water, which I have, it's salted, and we are going to boil them until they float up, and then just remove them, strain them out, and then we're gonna fry them in butter. We're gonna put some more butter, a little bit of olive oil in here so we can fry up our gnocchi so they get nice and crispy on the inside. How you doing, babe? Let's use that water for some poached eggs. Mm -hmm. You can use any vinegar. I like to use apple cider or white wine or balsamic, just gives it a nice flavor. This is gonna help the egg congeal more quickly. Conge congeal more quickly. You got it. Okay, we've got a hot pan. We're doing a lot at once. Boom, boom, boom. We're gonna do this in batches. Butter, olive oil. Make sure it's hot so that they don't stick. Always salting. You want it to be like a restaurant? Up that salt. Up your sodium intake. You didn't get that. Big portion. So filling, you don't need this much for one person. I'm doing it for the photo. Gnocchi is, because of that potato, keep that in mind, it's not like regular pasta. I would like, please, microgreens. These are local.
This, of course, would not be the hungover version. <laughs> Maybe we just do make it pretty. There you go. How you make a gorgeous springtime gnocchi with some delicious ingredients from the valley. That is a spring dish. It's so light and fluffy. If I cut into one of these, let's take a peek here. Look at that. Mm. That's what you want. Delicious. Make this. Honestly, budget friendly, soul friendly, and it's easy, it's quick. Give it a go. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. It's good to be back. Table 49.